Hey, everybody. It's Carol Annie Lachlan, your hostess with the mostest, and I am really annoyed. That's right. So annoyed that at 1.40 in the morning, I went ahead and went downstairs, got my headset, got my mic, hooked everything together, and I am making for you both an audio recording and a video of what it is that's burning me up so much right now. So Ancestry, um, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? Ancestry has decided once again to fix the not broken. And it's really, really driving me crazy. Normally what I can do is I can go to my phone once I'm done with the day and I can sort of tuck up under the covers and have a little TV on in the background and I can work for a little while using the Chrome browser and Ancestry because I don't like the app very much. The app doesn't let me see things very well. So I feel like I'm not necessarily doing a great job of editing and putting things into the tree the way that they should be. Sometimes I can't see things because it's like a blind alley or, you know, trying to see around a corner. So normally I can do that. But in the past couple of days, uh, not so much because this new hints format has come up. Have you seen this? If you have an existing hint there, a little green leaf, for a person, no longer do you get the full center of the screen, look at the layout of the record on the left and your tree on the right and everything like that. Instead, that has been knocked over into a column that takes up roughly one quarter of the screen on the right. So it's making me tilt over to the left. <laughs> Seriously, I'm getting hip tension. This is not okay. And with the phone, it, it's practically impossible. I realized I can't do this anymore. That's no good. The real frustration for me is, as many of you know, I am a contact tracer. I work 40 hours a week. I am now a researcher and not a caller. And so I spent 40 hours a week sitting at a desk at a laptop doing nothing but researching using the LexisNexis database. I don't want to take my laptop to bed with me, but I do want to be able to rack up a little bit of research time every day, either for somebody that I'm doing some work for or for myself. And lately I've been focusing on some family search stuff, so I haven't really thought that much about Ancestry. I've been out of Ancestry for, I don't know, some weeks. I don't know when this all started. All I know is that I came upon it in the past few days and I am burning up with annoyance. So. I'm going to show it to you on screen so you can see what I'm saying. This is a person who has no more hints left. Okay, all of the hints have been worked. There are only two, the 1900 census and a Texas marriage index. So for Gracie A. Jackson, I'm going to use the little spyglass and I'm going to do a search. I happen to know there is a document that I want to use for her. And so I'm going to show you how this works. Okay. Gracie Jackson married a Burnett Mapson or Mabson. And since I know that, I know that this Texas U.S. Select County Marriage Index 1837 to 1965 record is a record that I want. So it showed up from the spyglass search. So I'm clicking on the hot link and I'm going to add it super quick. Now, when I do, I get the normal screen. The information from the record that has been indexed shows up full screen, nice and big. It's very tasty and visible. I like that. And it shows me the names, it shows me the marriage place, the marriage year in this case. And so I just click on save. I have the default ability to save this record to Gracie A. Jackson. I am indeed going to do that. And then it pulls up the full screen comparison. Record on the left, tree on the right. Do you want to add anything? Yes, I do. This is Galveston County, and I didn't have that before. I just had Texas. So I'm adding it, and I'm adding it to the Reverend Burnett Mabson, her husband. Looks like mm, it could be Mabson, and I'm going to have to figure that out. Anyway, I'm clicking Save to Your Tree, the little orange button we love that resolves all of our problems. Bam. It's saved. That's awesome. That works really well. However, if I go to somebody who has 
a green shaky leaf. And I'm going to go into this and my friend Joy is not going to mind because we're working hard together on this tree for her. So if I look around and I find somebody who's got a green shaky leaf that I know I can research. Okay, let's take a look at someone who I know to be deceased. Have I worked all those people? Hmm. All right, let's look at this person who may or may not be alive still. I'm going to give her a try. There's one ancestry hint for her. I'm going to hope that this plays out the way I want it to. There we go. Okay, so this has shown up as a hint, right? I didn't have to go looking for it with a spyglass. It's already there waiting for me. When it comes up and I click on review, then all of a sudden, here comes up this little column to the right. And it's the only way to access the record to examine it and to add it to the tree or not. So I'm going to show you the hard way of doing that. And then I'm going to show you the shortcut out of this because they have left us a back door. Thank heavens. So the first thing that frustrates me is that, you know, you have a slidey thing on the right side of a screen that lets you slide up and down on a screen, you know, and you can move it with your mouse. Well, there are two slidey things right next to each other. One controls just this little right-hand column, and the other one controls the entire screen. So it's really easy to slip from one to the other, which means it's very frustrating. So I'm going to slide down and I'm going to look at the information. I've got a couple of surnames that I want to add to this person that I see in this record because I'm looking at a social security application and claim index and it's giving me multiple surnames for a woman and that's good. So if I were to add this though, I would have to click on the, the yes in the bottom of this little column. And then this is what it brings up. Teeny tiny, itsy, witsy, little information column from which I'm supposed to click on boxes and add information and find my way around. And then it shows the entire family layout, but it's teeny, teeny, tiny. That's no good. I'm not going to do that. And I've already not got in front of me again those surnames that I want to add to create her phantom spouses until I find those spouses with those other surnames and then I can create them in the tree and I can go ahead and find records for them. So normally, if you wanted to drive yourself insane, you would tick these little boxes like this one and then you would click on green next button at the bottom. I'm not going to do that because this annoys me. <laughs> Can you tell? So I'm doing the other thing. I'm using the back door. The back door is that the name of the record, the record group that this record is from, is in blue. That means it's a hot link. So this is U.S. Social Security Applications and Claims Index 1936 to 2007. I'm clicking on that. And by clicking on that, it takes me to the normal full screen assessment of who this person was. And that's good. It helps me to look at the entire thing. So I see that Jenny Lee Tiller was also Jenny Lee Gadson and Jenny Lee Reeves. Good. Awesome. Exactly what I want. It shows me that information so I can say to myself, Reeves and Gadson, Reeves and Gadson. I can say yes. And now I can add to this particular person just in her, whoops, in her surname field, the surnames of her two other, her two husbands, so that those are, those can serve as a reminder to me to create those husbands for her. And then I can add over the information that's new, like her middle name. I can add over and without being all squished, type 6 Mar 1921 and make it 6 March 1921. This says she was born in Atlanta. Okay, I'm not sure that's right, but I can change USA to United States, which is what I always want to do. I can lengthen 
5 Oct 1995 to 5 October 1995 because I always render anything in family search format. And then I can add mom and dad to her just by clicking the box and then save to your tree. Now that's how it's supposed to be. Not this squishy little column over on the right with me getting all twisted up sideways and everything like that. Now I can do what I normally do. I can add her spouses. She's got a spouse named Reeves. She's got a spouse named Gadson. She was born in about in 21, so we're going to say he was born in about 1920. That's one down. Now we're going to add Gadsen. Go to add family. And add spouse. G-A-D-S-O-N. We're going to say he's deceased and that he was born in about 1920 because she was born in 1921. Save it. And now all I have to do is go back to her surname field and nick out those married names because remember a woman is not born married no matter what society may say so that's what it looks like so you can see how very squishy this right hand column thing is the other problem with the right hand column is i've been working these in this particular tree i've been working these giant giant families and i was working with the 1880 census and i was adding information to plus adding in children and these are like 13 14 child families they're enormous families multiple wives all kinds of stuff going on and it takes me three minutes four minutes which doesn't sound like much but when you're doing the typing and everything it is to refine all the information and make it look nice and make sure that i've got the matches correct it's a census i want to be very careful with that and as soon as I hit save, it says there was an error with saving this to your tree. It might not have saved. It might not, really, possibly. Could be that it didn't. Not real happy about that. If I'm going to take my time to do this work, I want the software to cooperate with me. And I want to do things the easiest way possible, the most direct way possible a full screen view of whatever it is that I'm looking at. So yes, Ancestry, hear me in, hear me well. I'm not liking this. I'm not liking it at all. I've been tweeting about it. So have other people. And we will continue to tweet about it until you address this. Because making Ancestry more oblique and making it harder to add people or to add records to people is kind of like moving closer to family search. And family search's whole point lately has been to become more like ancestry and less like its old self. So let's make things easier when it comes to adding records, shall we? You're not just a DNA company, you're also a genealogy company. Hey, hey, there's a thought. So everybody, I had to get this off my chest because I really am that frustrated and I just had to say to you that if you're having frustrations right now with Ancestry, you are not alone. I'm going to be adding this to the YouTube channel. Patreon su supporters will get to see it first, and then everybody else will after. So please, oh, hang in there. Patreon, you'll have 24 hours of preview on this, and then I will leave it out there for everybody. And hang in because... You know, they make changes all the time, and sometimes they'll beta something and decide that it stinks, and they'll yank it back in. So let's hope that this is a beta and that they're going to decide, oh, a lot of people think this stinks. Otherwise, I hope that you are getting an opportunity to do some reparational work for somebody else, especially with there being a pandemic, so it's hard to serve the community in some ways. But you can serve the community by doing social justice work and genealogy. So please do that. Tomorrow, actually, technically today, is observed Martin Luther King Day, and that's a great day to do that. So have a great evening or morning or afternoon or whatever it is right now, wherever you are, and do your work. Don't be a Jeffrey. And above all, remember, expect surprises.